Hello and uh, welcome to the uh, Wednesday webinar from Abingdon College. So uh, this this week's webinar is uh, focusing around uh, careers, um, but we also thought we'd broaden it a little bit so that we'll talk about careers. We'll also talk about bursaries. So uh, my name is Greg. I'm from the uh, College's Marketing Department and I'm hosting the next couple of uh, webinars. So we'll uh, see how that kind of goes. And uh, I'm going to be joined by um, Megan Eat, who's one of our career advisors, and also by Danny Smith, who runs the uh, the college bursaries. Um, we're going to be taking uh, questions from the public. So um, that will appear as a little kind of question that you type out. We can't see who you are. We're not doing any uh, uh, video chats it'll just be a, a kind of a, a question that gets posed and then i'll come in as the host and i'll just ask the question and then i'll i'll push it to one of our um, attendees to answer and if both want to answer then then we'll do one and then then we'll do the other um and we are scheduled this webinar to last about an hour so uh we've got a number of um people who are you know planned to to uh, to attend so we'll uh, get them to ask questions and then we'll see how it goes so what i thought i'd do is uh i'd introduce our, uh, our participants so uh as i said it'll be uh, megan eat and uh danny smith so i'll um i'll introduce uh megan and then i'll just get her to um, say a few words about what she does at the college um and then we'll go on to uh, to danny uh, and then we'll we'll go back and we'll look at the questions and we'll uh, we'll start. So Megan. So good morning. Uh, so yes, my name's Megan. Um, so I am the career advisor um, and I am based at the Abingdon campus. And we also have two other career advisors at our other two campuses. So we've got um, Colin and Caroline are both based at Whitney. And then we also have Caroline, who is based at our Commonlees Farm campus. So there is support for students at all of our campuses. Um, all students at the college, um, whether they are studying a full time course, whether it's an apprenticeship, whether it's a higher education course or it could be a part time um, adult course, they all have access to our team and personal guidance. Um, and this is also on offer to um, not just students that are enrolled at the college, but it could be potential students. It could be parents of potential students that are looking to come to um, the college and also um, sort of external clients. So we might have um, external adults that want to have a talk about um, courses as well. So we are here to help um, sort of the majority of um, people. Um, we will do, we can discuss many areas. Um, this can include different forms of education, so it might not necessarily be um, college courses. Um, we also um, can discuss all about alternative training. Um, we can look at employment, apprenticeships, um, sort of career progression, CVs, interview skills, application forms, applying to university. Um, so we, we do offer a, a wide range of support for um, all of our students. We all do have um, our, our own general email addresses, but we have also all got a generic um, careers email account, um, which is careers at abingdon-whitney.ac.uk. And the reason that we We've got um, this generic um, inbox is that if one of us is on holiday or one of us is not well, at least uh, one of the career advisors can pick it up and we can then um, obviously answer your query. So that's sort of just a, an overview really of um, what we do in the careers team. All of our career advisors are qualified to level six. Um, so we are all qualified to the correct level, um, which is required by um, the different establishments. OK, thank you for that, uh, Megan. Now we'll, uh, we'll go to Danny. Hello, good morning. Um, my name is Danny Smith. Um, I work within student engagement. Um, I'm based at the Abingdon campus. Um, and I oversee uh, an admin team within student engagement that deals with bursaries. Um, 
Although I'm based at Abingdon, um, I oversee the bursaries for all campuses. Um, we offer bursaries for 16 to 18 year olds and also for adults. We have various different bursaries that we can offer. Um, 16 to 18 and then a 19 plus bursary. Uh, some of the courses, um, the high level level three courses uh, require students to apply for an advanced learner loan and for those students who apply for that, we then have the advanced learner loan bursary which can supplement that. Um, also as part of the bursaries, we um, administer the, the free college meals. So uh, some students may have received free school meals whilst at school and we have a fund to be able to uh, offer a similar thing at college. Um, like uh, the careers department, we do have our own uh, email address. Uh, so student bursaries at abingdon-whitney.ac.uk uh, for any queries um, and we can help you uh, with your application. All bursary applications are done online through a portal um, which connects to Pay My Student. Um, so it, I mean, it is it's a fairly easy to do, uh, fairly easy to use portal, um, but we are happy to answer any questions if you get should get stuck using that. And we do have some guidance that we can send out, which will take you step by step through that process. Um, so yeah, that's just an overview of bursaries at the college. OK. Uh, OK, thank you for that, uh, Danny and uh, Megan. The, um, so we're going to have a look at some of the kind of questions. And there's a question here from someone. My son's just finished their second year at college. Uh, but they don't have a job or a university place yet. Um, are there any options they could explore? So I'm going to uh, put this one to, um, to Megan uh, and see what uh, what she uh, can answer. It. So um, yes, um, if somebody has um, finished their second year and they haven't decided that they want to go to uni or they haven't got um, a job yet. I mean, obviously, yes, we can help them. Um, their options would include um, at that point um, they could look for general employment, whether this is part time or full time, and we would give them help with doing that, such as their CV, um, application forms. Um, we can also do some mock interviews with them and just get them a little bit used to having interviews. The other option would be to look at um, an apprenticeship. So if they've done their level three, um, then they could look at um, either higher level apprenticeships or even degree level. So if they were quite interested in wanting to get a university degree but didn't want to go to full time university, they could look at doing um, um, higher apprenticeship or a degree one. But alternatively, they can also look at doing um, the same level as what they've done in their course because they could look at maybe a different sector, maybe something else within the area that they've just studied that they might want to learn a little bit more about. So they could do um, a, a sort of general level three apprenticeship or um, they can obviously as well make um, a late application um, through to university. So they would be their general sort of options um, that they can they can have a look at. OK, that's a great thing. Thank you. Right, there's another one uh, which is um, what advice uh, do the college give for um, for writing CVs and uh, and applying for kind of uh, any part time work um, while, while a student is at college? So uh, again, if I put this to Megan. So um, the careers team are very happy to help students look for employment and we can do this in a variety of different ways. Um, we can help them with putting a CV together, whether it's from scratch or whether they've got a CV, but it needs to be um, maybe added to maybe look at a different format for it. So it could be a skills based CV if they're looking um, for work that they haven't 
actually done before, but they've got the skills from their course. Um, so we just look at how it's all set up. Um, we can also help them with covering letters and um, as I said before, we can do applications, we can do interview skills with them. Um, we will also give them lots of different job seeking sites that they can use and advice on if they want to post their CV um, on the site. Um, so, for instance, if you want to post their CV, we always advise the students not to put address or telephone number. So literally just to put their name and an email address obviously to, um, for security reasons. Um, we'll advise them about registering on these sites or the different ones that they can use. Um, but also as a careers team, when the students are in college with us, if they haven't finished, we also do um, uh, group sessions with students in um, the different faculties. We work very, very closely with faculty areas. So we can do um, sessions on um, work, employment skills that they will need, what employers are looking for, um, again, CV help. And we also, as a college, um, run a mock interview session. So we get local employers in and we offer the students a chance to have a mock interview with um, the employers. Um, so, you know, we offer a really good range of um, help for the students. Excellent. OK, thank you for that. Um, we've got another question. It's uh, it's probably going to be uh, Danny who answers this one. Um, what are bursaries and how can my son apply for one? OK, um, on our on our website um, under uh, student support, there is a section for fees and bursaries. And within that section, um, there is a, a, a sort of question there saying how to apply, which will lead them to a portal uh, which will take them through to pay my student. Um, but if uh, if anybody has problems finding that, we can certainly uh, they can email in and we will we will send that link to them. That will then take them to pay my student um, and initially the student will need to set up uh, an account. So they'll need their student number, which should be on all their um, uh, communication that they would have received uh, from admissions when applying. Um, and also they'll need to put in their date of birth and create a password and confirm that password. They'll then be sent an email to the email address that they've registered with uh, the college when applying for the course uh, and they can activate their account um, and then they can go through to the um, to the portal, log in um, and they'll be asked several questions about income and whether they're in receipt of any benefits at all um, and the reason they're applying for the bursary. Um, they'll also be asked to upload um, some evidence, uh, so um, a bank statement um, and um, evidence of benefits. We do require full documents, um, so not just the front, front page of those benefits, so a full month's bank statement full document uh, of benefits um, and they'll be asked several questions about uh, their residency, um, for example, whether they're in care, whether they have an education, health and care plan. And from those answers, we can actually assess the bursary um, and then um, those answers will determine which bursary they're eligible for and, and how much they're eligible for. Bursaries pay out for extra things like uniform and kit. Um, we don't pay out for any trips. Um, unfortunately, we're not running trips at the moment, but uh, yeah, they don't pay out for trips. So uniform, kit uh, for art, class, art courses, a studio fee. Um, so various different things and for the adults and the 19 plus or those applying for the advanced learner loan bursary, we can contribute towards uh, childcare. Um, and if for students who live three or more miles from the college, we can uh, fund some money towards travel into college. Um, and then once we assess the bursary and give an award, we will contact the student from pay my student um, to the email that's set up on the account, letting them know if they've been successful and if they have been successful, when any payments would be made. 
Um, some of those payments are set up on the system to be paid directly to the student if the student needs to order their uniform directly themselves. But if it's something that's due to be payable by the student to the college finance department, then that money might go directly from the best refund into the college finance department. So the, the student would know that that's been paid, but they wouldn't have the money sent directly to them. Um, so yeah, that's that's the basics of how it would work. And like I say, if anybody um, does have any queries, they can email us with any further queries. OK, um, there's just a kind of a couple of follow up questions on, on bursaries. Um, one is how easy is it to get bursary support? Um, and the other is how do I find out uh, about eligibility for a bursary? Um, so um, eligibility for bursary would um, depend on uh, level of income. Um, so we are still setting the um, the sort of um, gradings of income this year, but basically um, usually if the household income, if you're 16 to 18, and you're living at home with your parents and their household income is less than around £25,000 in the household, uh, you would likely to be eligible. Um, also, um, benefits like universal credit, income support, job seekers allowance, the means tested benefits um, are something else that make you eligible. But we do have to look at every individual um, student's um, criteria to establish if someone's eligible. Um, if you're if you become if you're in the higher bracket nearer to the 25,000 um, threshold, then it's likely that you might just get money for maybe travel. But if your income is a lot lower than that, it, you might get extra sort of a percentage of the money towards your kit and uniform. Um, we usually uh, can pay out 100% of travel costs, um, but for other things like studio fee and kit, it's usually done on a percentage. Um, so you can, um, again, inquire with us and we may be able to give you a little bit more detailed information on your own circumstance and whether you will be eligible. Um, but the best thing is just to apply and then we can uh, we can go through that process. And the second question was? Uh, was about um, bursary support. How easy is it to get bursary support? Um, it, I think really it, the process for applying is easy, but also, um, yes, we do have a pot of money um, that we do have to share around the students, but uh, judging from this past year, most pe people who actually applied and were within the threshold were able to get support. Um, so I, I think the answer would probably be yes, it's, it's fairly easy, um, both in the process and in the likelihood of getting some support. So I hope that answers your question. Yeah, I, uh, I think it did. So we're just going to um, go to another question, um, which was about the um, the facilities on offer on the different campuses. Um, so I think we'll see if um, if Megan can um, input into that. So uh, what facilities do the campuses offer? So when I'm assuming when they're talking about facilities, does it mean I would assume what we have on offer for the students to use? Um, so if I. Yeah. Yeah. yeah so um, each uh, each campus have slightly different facilities. For example, our Abingdon campus, um, we do have a canteen restaurant 
um, and a costa for the students to use. Um, we've also got um, a library facility um, that the students can use um, in the Abingdon campus um, and that's got a quiet area and also um, tutors will use that quite a lot. We've got quite a lot of breakout areas as well in all three campuses so students can um, obviously you know bring in their own lunch and have a breakout with with that or sit and you know read a book or when they're not in their classes um we we don't um we don't currently have um a facility at our whitley campus for um a restaurant because um unfortunately that we we don't have that but we do offer um some stuff through the bursary if you are if you are, are entitled to free meals um i'm sure danny can um, explain how that works um but we also do have um food available at the common Lees campus um as part of the um all of the courses as well all of our courses have what we call um an enrichment session so that's sort of covered in different sort of areas of that um, it can be sometimes it might be a debate about something um, so if that answers the question about the facilities you see there's toilets and, and everything on there so I don't know if that answered the question about the facility bit Um, yeah, I think that was that was quite uh, good coverage. It might be worth um, just mentioning um, some of the courses that are available um, only in Abingdon or um, or only in in, in Whitney, mm -hmm. um, because there are certain courses that that are quite specific to um, to some sites. Um, so it might be just worth kind of reiterating which which courses okay. go on um, mm -hmm. only in those kind of uh, forms. So um, at m the, the Whitney campus and the Abingdon campus generally offer the same courses. The differences are um, Abingdon offers engineering um, and Whitney doesn't. Um, but Whitney does offer all of our construction. Um, we offer motor vehicle at Abingdon and Whitney do not. Um, I think that's all of the oh, performing arts is only run at um, Abingdon. Um, and I think that's roughly the, 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 the changes, the difference there. The our common lease farm is purely um, our um, animal care, horse care, animal management, um, uh, horticultural, agricultural, obviously, because it is a farm. So the difference there is, is that that's the only they're the only courses that are run um, on that campus. Um, we do um, access to higher education courses, and there are different ones run at the diff at Whitney as opposed to um, Abingdon. Um, and I think that's all for um, the ch the courses, I think. Yeah, so just be aware when you are looking on our website under the courses, it does tell you which campus that they are, um, they run at. OK. Great, thanks for that and uh, Megan. And then we've got a, uh, another question that's coming. Um, I'm not going to get my English or my maths. GCSE um, to the grades that, that would be kind of considered a pass. Um, can I still do a course at college? And I'll put that to Megan. Yes, so um, if you don't achieve um, your English and maths, um, it is possible to um, do a course with us. We offer courses at the college from entry level all the way up to level six, which is higher education. So it, depending on what you you have, um, so students can, so it works slightly differently. So if a student um, wanted to do a level two course with us, what, what we require them to have is um, four GCSEs at a grade three or a D. Um, 
and they, it is possible to do their English and maths alongside the level two course, but it would depend on what grade they got in that level two, um, in, in their GCSE, sorry, English and maths, as to what level we feel that they would be able to um, cope with. But it is possible. Um, students can either do functional skills or they can do GCSEs alongside um, our courses. Um, and with our entry level course, students have the opportunity to do um, taster sessions sort of each term within the different faculty areas, which is quite a nice idea because it can get them used to different areas. But it all really depends on if they achieved a grade in their English and maths as to what level we could put them on or if they didn't achieve a grade then obviously they would start off on the lower level but it's definitely possible for a student to um to start on on a course with us uh, uh, i'll just say actually sorry, sorry there just to say that all students that do come to college anyway do sit um an initial assessment test for their english and their maths so again we would we would be looking at what they would be achieving in that as well okay there's just a follow up to that, which is if I've been offered a level three course, but I didn't get English and maths, could I still do my level three course? No, no. Um, with our level three courses, um, because of the um, level of work that's involved within the course, we require students to have at least one of the either English or maths. Um, their students are only allowed to do one of those alongside the level three. And this is purely down to because of the level of work with the level three, that it, it's just too much work for students. OK, great. Thanks. OK, so just looking through, there's a question about um, will there be more apprenticeships being advertised and do they come uh, throughout the year so uh, maybe megan if you wanted to have uh, a go at that one yes so apprenticeships um are offered throughout the year it does depend on the employer um there are a diff there's, there's quite a lot of different sites you can use. Obviously, you can look on the college sites because obviously we offer apprenticeships, so we have employers that contact us with vacancies. Um, there is a national site um, where students can get registered on, and there is also a local Oxfordshire um, apprenticeship team um, that students can get linked in with, and there is also Oxfordshire County Council that offer um, bulletins for apprenticeships. As I said before, depending on the company, um, so I'll give an example um, of BMW. They usually open their apprenticeship scheme in February and they close it in March. Um, but then there are a lot of others that just advertise um, throughout throughout the year. It really depends on who the company would be using as their training provider as to when the training provider wants to start the programme. Um, but generally, majority of them um, are throughout the year, apart from a lot of national. More, you find more national companies will have um, a set time to apply, but generally, general employers tend to do it throughout the year. Okay. Great. Thanks for that, uh, uh, Megan. Um, there's another question that's uh, come in. Um, I'm interested in an access to HE course. Um, how can I apply for that? Um, and would would there be a loan available to uh, to help offset the costs? <laughs> okay. Yep. So our access to higher education courses um, are for 19, 19 plus students. And they are um, they're, they're produced really for students that haven't got their level three in order for them to go on to higher education. So they're a year long. Um, most students that do our access to higher education course are 
work they work they work alongside the course because it's um it's normally a two-day course two days a week um and the idea is is that you can get your qualification to go to university within a year rather than having to do a level three two-year course um i believe I, I might have to go to Danny for this, but I think you do. <laughs> I think you can claim the student loan or the advanced learner loan. For the advanced learner loan. So yeah. Right. Actually, I might. Would you, if we just go to uh, to Danny for a second, just because she mentioned something about the type of loan there. Yeah. So um, I believe I'd need to double check, but I believe um, that for the access course, students would need to apply for the advanced learner loan. Now, the advanced learner loan is um, uh, a loan uh, similar to what you would get for going to university. Um, so you would actually apply for that in the case that you would actually apply for it through student finance. So that's www.gov.uk forward slash student dash finance. Um, so you would apply for the advanced learner loan. And when you apply for that, you can also apply at the same time for our college advanced learner loan bursary. Um, but what we can't do at our end is we can't actually access, um, assess your eligibility for the advanced learner loan bursary until you've been approved for the advanced learner loan. Now our um, data department here at the college would have access to be able to check uh, whether you've been approved for the advanced learner loan through student finance um, and they uh, they would let us know or you could provide your um, approval letter to us to prove that you've been accepted and then we can go forward with your application and assess you for the advanced learn loan bursary. So the advanced learn loan would help towards your uh, tuition costs and the advanced learn loan bursary would help for any additional cost. As previously mentioned, um, things like kit, equipment, materials, uniform, but also for uh, travel to college and um, help towards childcare should you need help with that. Now, if you are applying for a childcare through the bursary, um, there are several extra forms to complete um, for that. And the agreement um, for childcare uh, providing is between yourself and the childcare provider. Um, and we, as the college, we would pay from the bursary fund directly to the childcare provider uh, through a back system. Uh, so that's how that would work. But yes, they would need to provide various details and the childcare provider would need to be Ofsted registered uh, to be able to get funds for us to fund that. Uh, so yes, I believe so for the access course, you would need to apply for the advanced learn, learn alone. Um, but if you are thinking of applying, do come, come back to us and check uh, either with the bursary department or with our admissions department and they could confirm that. Um, basically, uh, courses that aren't funded by the Education Skills Funding Agency um, are courses where you would need to apply for the advanced learn loan at that level three and above level. OK, thanks. So Megan, just a follow up on that. What sort of core, what kind of subjects are covered in the access to HE course? So at um, the Whitney campus, we do the nursing and healthcare um, course. Um, and at Abingdon, um, we do the biomedical and we also do the social science with science with social science which people can get into nursing with that one so if people didn't want to go to um whitney they you can actually get into um nursing with the um the science the social science with the social science um now i do believe um it, it might change um so it's always worth checking this um when you apply for the advanced learner loan to pay for your access course um, I believe that if you go to uni within uh, one year of qualifying, 
you don't have to pay the loan back um, but please check that on the gov website because obviously it does change um, it does change all the time and the access to higher education course as well is um, only valid for a certain amount of time and this is um, this is purely down to universities so it's worth checking with your chosen universities if you don't go if it's sort of with over maybe three years old um, just to double check that they are still happy with the qualification okay thanks right um we have another question um it's about our course is going to be run online or on campus um so <laughs> That's going to be an interesting one to answer because the, the context is some courses that we offer uh, are a mix of being on campus or online, um, but it might have uh, more of a COVID-19 uh, context to this. So um, I'll put this one back to uh, to Megan and see, uh, <laughs> see the answers we get. <laughs> OK. Um... I'm going to say I, I don't actually can, I can't really give a definite answer as yet um, as to how a lot of our courses are going to be run because obviously the information from the Department for Education or the government changes every week. Um, so yes, yeah, so I can't really give a definite answer to that. Um, some some courses may be half and half some may all still be online i i don't know um so i think it's just watch this space um really at this precise time obviously we will be putting um we will be putting um updates on our website as i say because it just changes all all the time um however we do already run um courses through our adult learning some of those are online as well um so you know we do we do have that facility that we we we, we can do that but as i say with our full-time courses at the moment i think it is just going to be a watch this space um i know that's not very helpful but that's all i've got at the moment really okay and it's it's probably worth um just reminding people that the uh, the website uh, abingdon-whitney.ac.uk has got um, a coronavirus uh, news update on it. So that that follows through as soon as information is is put out by the government, then um, we we update our information. And we're planning at the moment for enrolments to be online, um, but there are plans to get students back in as soon as we can. OK, um, one more question, slightly different tact, which is um, are college courses like A-levels? Uh, and if not, what are the differences? So I'll put this to uh, Megan. So um, courses that are run at college um, are more practical based. Um, because we offer um, subjects sort of like construction, motor vehicle, hairdressing, beauty. So obviously they are very practical based, um, but also courses like our health and social care, our child care, um, all have, well, all of our courses have an element of work experience anyway. Um, so whereas A-levels are all academically based um, college courses are more coursework and practical based however I would say that um, there are a quite a lot a majority now of our college courses um, do have um, exams so they're not coursework based um, now because some of the specifications have changed um, so it's just worth sort of pointing out that they are they are an element of both so they're quite academic but they're also quite practical um, but i would also um say that uh if students do a full level three course with us and they do their full two years with us then um their course is equivalent to three a levels um so you can still um apply to university with our courses 
And um, just to um, let sort of people know that um, for this year, um, we had um, over 200, well, 211 students actually applied to um, UK universities through the college. And um, as of June um, this year, um, 191 of those students had received offers from at least three of their chosen um, universities. And the deadline actually was not till the um, was whether was actually yesterday for most students. So, um, you know, it they the co college courses are um, they are thought highly of now at university just as much as A levels. Um, so it is worth just mentioning that. There was just a follow up on that um, because you were talking about uh, the number of students who had applied. Uh, does the college help in uh, in a student applying to university? Yes. Um, so what we do um, with the college, um, which actually we, what we've been doing now um, in preparation. So we start the preparation for university with our level three students. Um, so we've been doing that now um, with the students virtually. So we have been talking to them about how to look about choosing a university. So you know what different aspects to look for um, in choosing their university. Also what to look for in choosing their courses. Um, and then also about the timelines. So when they and also about virtual open days, which have all been happening now um, and just the general timeline. And then we've got and personal statements we've been doing for them. So students can start their personal statement over the summer. And then when we then get back um, to college um, in the September, we then start working with the students about registering with the college application system. We run sessions with them about how they go through the application form, what's required um, and just sort of general support, really. And if a student wants to do that um, one to one with us, that's on offer as well. It doesn't have to be in the group session. Um, so, yeah, so we, we give a lot of help um, before and after. Um, I'm still sort of helping students now with um, their offers and UCAS um, and everything um, like that. Um, so, yeah. OK, thank you for that. One. There's, um, there's another question which sort of linked, um, which sort of linked to the, the, the last one, which is do the teachers or the tutors at college and can they help in terms of applying to university? Megan what do you think? Uh, yeah um, all of our um, all of our curriculum areas are linked to careers so students can receive help um, from their um, tutors about working, help with working in their chosen sort of sector of study. Um, they can get help with employment, they can get help with university. The careers team at all three campuses, we work very, very closely with the curriculum and we work together about what we feel is a requirement for the students. What will they need from us both? Um, and staff have also had training from the careers team about all of the online resources that we can offer students, all about UCAS, about the Gatsby benchmarks. Um, so they've all had, majority of them have had that training and we're planning on, um, I think, running that out again, um, sort of during the year. Um, but yes, yeah, so that they can get help with either us or their or their tutor. And I, w I think it's probably good to point out that the, probably the majority of our tutors are um, tutors that have worked in the industry already. Um, so they know they know that industry. So it's, they can they can always give a lot of help. Yeah. OK, um, thank you for that. The um, the next question is about um, virtual open days. Um, so it's probably worth uh, mentioning that we, we, we ran a, a virtual open day um, in June and, and the information that we uh, collated for that um, is still on the website. So 
Um, we don't plan to run another virtual open day um, in the next couple of months. But if you're interested, um, if you go to the go to the um, go to our website and you look up virtual open days, you'll find all the information that was uh, presented for um, uh, our open day in June. So there are virtual walkthroughs. Um, there are some videos from from tutors talking about their courses um, and there's also information there in terms of options, whether it's higher education, whether it's an apprenticeship or our, our 16 to 18 uh, kind of program. And also adult education also features on the website as well. So um, if you're interested in, in looking at the virtual open day, go onto our website and, and look on the virtual open day pages and you'll find information there that should probably uh, give you a sense of the college. There's also a form there, so if you've got any questions, um, very specific questions uh, or just general ones you can you can fill out a form there and that will come to to us and we can uh, we can get back to you with the information on that um, the the next sort of open day as as such is likely to be the um, grades check days that occur in um, at the end of August on the GCSE grades because um, the, the grades this year um, although they're, they're based on predicted grades, are going to have the same effect that you have grades that you thought you were going to achieve, and then these are the grades that you are going to achieve. And um, we'll be open over the, the, the two days um, at the end of August when the grades come out to answer queries, to answer questions, um, and hopefully to, uh, to get the students onto programmes that they'd applied for um, with the grades that they actually achieve. That kind of form. Um, there's another question um, which is uh, probably for Megan, which is are there any uh, websites out there or is there any software out there that can help me in um, in deciding what career I might uh, I might do? Uh, and I know that we do have uh, certain bits of software that we've used. So um, Megan. Um, yeah, I mean, um, there, there's loads, there's loads out there that you can use. So I'm, I'm not going to bore everybody by going through the whole lot. But the college um, itself have a resource, and that's um, called Eclipse. Now that's a licensed-based resource, so that's only available to college students studying with us because it's password linked. Um, the students can get information on anything career related, um, employment, um, university, um, health, um, lifestyle. Um, there's also like a career wizard on there, so a little bit of a quiz type thing that you can do um, that asks you lots of questions about what subjects you like, um, what sort of things you would want to include in work. Um, that's a really, really useful tool. Um, and as I say, majority of our staff um, who've attended our training have had, have had a run through on that. Um, we have also got, um, we also have access to the Job Explorer database, which is JED for short, which is um, probably an easier to navigate um, website. So maybe students that have um, SEN or some of our lower level students could navigate around that one slightly easier. So again, all tutors have had training um, and um, navigation through that site as well. So again, it's very, very similar to Eclipse. It's just that it's um, it's easier to use. Um, UCAS site, um, that's predominantly university based, um, but that's got lots of useful information on as well, which we use quite a lot. Um, also, the National Career Service is a, a great resource and that's nationally across everywhere so people can use that. So that's that's an excellent um, uh, resource, um, but also students as well that do um, come to the college. Um, they do have access to guest speakers that come in, um, you know, employers, local employers come in to talk to the students. We have universities, so students can gain first hand information um, as well as using lots of different um, links as webinars they can use, um, quizzes, skills assessments. And obviously we also, um, you know, have a chat to them about how to use social media safely with 
um, looking at what local employers and national employers are offering. So uh, there's there's lots of other links that they can use. Barclays have got a good one. Barclays Life Skills is really, really good. Um, so yeah, so we there are lots for them to use and we will give them all of that information when, um, when we um, uh, talk to them. OK, thank you. Just a little bit of a follow up on that. Um, somebody said, I heard that last year um, at Freshers Fair you had um, universities attend that. Yes, so um, every September we hold a Freshers Fair at the college and we get um, different employers out, um, different um, organisations and we also have various universities. Um, obviously this year due to the current situation um, this is going to be planned to be done virtually um, but we are contacting um, sort of the we, we generally tend to look at our top 10 universities that our students apply to um, and we're contacting the universities at the moment to get them to put something together virtually for us and then um, our student voice um, lady is going to be organising this to be virtual this year. But yeah, students will have access to that. OK, thank you for that. Um, right, so I'll and there's one more question here. Oh, um, I've heard I've heard some stuff in the media about um, T levels. Um, are they something that I can do uh, at college? Um, and roughly, what are they? So, um, the T levels are a new technical qualification um, that the government have brought in. Now, not every subject is being um, offered at the moment. They're being phased in um, on certain um, subjects and they're being run out at slightly different years. Um, now, I know um, I'm sure, I know we have been trailing some subjects on this. Um, I'm not quite sure which ones we've been trying. I know definitely health and social care have been doing it and I believe childcare and I believe, um, uh, I think it might be engineering. Um, we've been trialing the employment element of it um, because um, students have to do 315 hours or 45 days um, work experience as part of the new T level. So I know we've been putting that into some of our courses, um, which obviously has enabled us as a college to develop relationships with local employers around this for when they, the T levels go live completely. Um, just to say though that the T level is only offered at our level three, um, so it's not offered at any lower um, qualification than that. So I hope that helps. Um, it's, it's, they're quite new still at the moment, but that's sort of what we've been doing. OK, um, Megan, there's just a follow up to the previous um, question we were talking about. What was the name of the SEN career website that you mentioned? OK, it's the Job Explorer database, um, but I, I believe that's on our that's on our college platform. I, I believe that's license based as well. So I'm not sure that's open to the general public, but yes, yeah, the Job Explorer database and it's usually known as JED. But as I say, I believe that is college, college linked as well. OK, yeah, that's, that's right. Uh, it's probably also worth mentioning that on, on T levels there are there is a, a, a a couple of pages on our website which um, explain what T levels are, um, show a couple of the government videos um, and also explain what we're actually offering. Um, they've been phased in by a number of colleges over the last uh, few years, but they don't they're not aimed to go live for a, for a year or so, um, but they have quite a heavy context of work experience uh, involved in them. Um, and that that is by the nature more um, difficult to organise. So we've been planning for the T-levels that we eventually think we will be 
um, introducing, we've been planning to, um, to to get that in place. So we've been talking to employers um, potentially two years before the, the the course actually starts to make sure that that element of the the program is is available. Um, but yeah, if you have a look on our website, there's some more information. Or if you go to the government website, again, there's a section there about T levels. Um, it's a little bit in government speak, but but generally it's kind of promoting the idea that they should see. Um, vocational qualifications are on the same level as A-levels um, and to do that they've, they've uh, ramped up the work and employer uh, connections on those courses um, to make them far more viable from their point of view. Okay um, we've just got another kind of couple of questions uh, before we uh, wrap up um, at, um, uh, at 12. Um, it's a question for Megan. I think it's um, you mentioned the Gatsby benchmarks. Um, what is Gatsby? OK, so um, the Gatsby benchmarks were bought in um, by the Gatsby Foundation, um, which is to ensure that best practice is adhered by schools and colleges. So to offer students they're set there, so they're a framework. So it's, um, it's making sure that colleges, all colleges and all, all um, schools have a stable careers programme that their students are learning from career and labour market information. It's also about making sure that schools and colleges are addressing the needs of each pupil. Um, it's all about in, what encounters with employers, employees for students, experiences at their workplaces, um, ex encounters with further and higher education and also personal guidance that um, colleges and schools are giving to their students. Um, they are, um, they are, so every quarter, every term, um, every school and college has to do um, a, um, uh, it's like a toolkit, so it's called Compass, and you have to rate yourself on that, which, and all this information does go through to the DFE. Um, so that's all, it's all recorded about what, what you're doing with your um, students um, and how you're meeting the benchmarks. And it is now part of the Ofsted um, requirement so Ofsted will be looking at these when they do their inspections. OK, that's, that's great. Thanks. There's uh, one last question, which hopefully uh, Danny can answer. She's been kind of <laughs> kept you in the background for the last. Uh, <laughs> um, is there a good time to apply for a bursary? And can I apply for a bursary before uh, I'm at the college. Right, yes. Um, the bursary uh, portal opened for the college. I set it live on the 1st of July. Uh, students can apply for a bursary now if they've applied for a course. They need to be on our um, databases having applied, so they've got their student number to be able to set up their um, account with Pay My Student. Apply now, so it gives you time to get the, the application in and gives you time to upload all the evidence. If you can't do it when you first go into the account, you can always go back and add it later. Um, we can't actually assess the bursary until you're actually enrolled um, and we may, won't make any payments out to you or directly internally within the college until a couple of weeks after the start of your course. But certainly you can apply now. Um, and like I say, get that bursary application in as soon as you can um, from now on. Um, and uh, we we like to get all applications in between um, within three weeks of the start of your course. But there's no reason why you shouldn't apply before you're actually enrolled onto the course. We will sit on that application, but it'll be there and ready to go. Um, and we can look at that application if there's anything we still need. We will contact you and ask you to provide us with that information so that it's uh, absolutely ready to be assessed when we get later into August and early in September. OK, great, thanks. So 
So we're um, coming to the end of the, uh, our second webinar. Um, this this uh, will be recorded uh, and it'll be on our website. So um, if you didn't get a chance to 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 visit, you can uh, you can go back over the questions and uh, get a sense of of how we uh, we work with students to um, to have a valued career uh, and also you know how and uh, and potentially when to apply for bursaries. Um, I'd just like to thank Danny Smith um, who talked about the bursaries and Megan Eat who um, is one of the careers advisors uh, based on the Abingdon campus and, and hopefully you found this uh, webinar uh, interesting and useful and uh, next week we're doing one uh, all about adult education. So um, see you next week. Thank you very much. <laughs>